I'll now start up the devices and open up console connections to them. Here you can see that my Windows device is booting up. And here's my ASA. Both of them are using VNC. If you're using a Mac, you're going to want to use Chicken of the VNC as your VNC client. On Windows, you can just use the default VNC client. So notice here my ASA is booting up and is now rebooting. On the Windows device, I'm going to restart it. It's installed various drivers and needs to be rebooted. I suggest that you do that. Allow the Windows device to boot. Wait for it to install drivers and then click Reboot to reboot the Windows device. On the ASA, you need to wait for it to boot and then reboot. Now this depends, but on the ASA, you may need to continue using VNC or you may need to use a Telnet connection. That often depends on your computer. But before we configure the ASA, I'm going to configure the Windows device. I need to install Java on the Windows device. So I'm going to personalize this and change the background. I'm going to change the screen resolution. So I have a better screen resolution. I've been asked to reboot the Windows device. I'll do that again. Essentially, we just need to get Windows up and running, and then we can continue configuring the ASA. Okay, so Windows has rebooted. If you need to know the username and password, they are displayed on the desktop. Username is IE user. Password is displayed over here. I'm going to change the desktop once again to a standard Windows desktop. And then I'm going to open up Internet Explorer and confirm that I have Internet access. In this case, I do. The reason why is that the NAT cloud gives the network Internet access and allocates IP addresses to devices in the GNS3 topology. So my Windows PC has got an IP address via DHCP of 192.168.122.30. What I'm going to do here initially is manually configure the IP address on the Windows device. So 192.168.122.30. Default gateway is going to be the NAT cloud. I'll set my DNS servers to Google to keep it easy. And I'm going to click Advanced, Add, and I'm going to add a secondary IP address here. This is the IP address that I'm going to use for accessing the ASA. So I've got a temporary IP address that I'll use to update Java, and then I've got an IP address that I'll use to connect to the ASA. So at the moment, my Windows PC can ping Google. It can ping its local IP address, but it can't ping the ASA. I now need to initially configure the ASA. In my example, I'm told to use serial port dev TTY S0 for console input output. So I'll close VNC down. I'm going to turn off the ASA and then configure the ASA to use Telnet rather than VNC. I'll start up the ASA again and I'll open up a console. In this example, notice that a Telnet console was opened up. I can see that the ASA is booting up. And now I simply need to wait for the ASA to boot up. And there we go. So enable 
password is blank. What I can do now is configure the ASA's inside interface. So in this example, it's gigabit 00, and I'm gonna name it inside. The security level has been set to 100 by default. So all I've done is named this interface and the security level has been set. Interface is currently shut down and there's no IP address. So I'll configure the ASA with this IP address and I'll no shut the interface. So at this point, we should be able to ping the Windows PC. That assumes that I've turned off the Windows firewall. So I'll do that for the lab. Try again and notice the ASA can ping the Windows PC and in the same way, the Windows PC can now ping the ASA. So I have IP connectivity from my Windows PC to the ASA. Now to allow the Windows PC to configure the ASA, I need to complete some initial configuration. And one of the things I need to do is create a username so I'm gonna create a username of David with password Cisco and privilege level 15. I'm gonna enable the HTTP server and I'm gonna allow anyone on the inside to configure and manage the ASA. So you need to do some initial config, configure an IP address, configure HTTP, configure a username. So on the PC, I can now browse to the ASA. I'll use HTTPS rather than HTTP. And notice we now told that there's a problem with the website security certificate. The ASA is using a self-signed certificate. We need to accept that to continue. And what I can do now is install the ASDM launcher. I'll log in with my username and password. I'll store those credentials. This is a lab, so it's not a problem. I'll save the file. And I'll now run it. Notice we told we need to install Java from java.com to run the ASDM software. So don't forget to go to java.com and install the software. So I'm gonna to go to java.com and click free Java download. And I'm going to agree and start the free download. I'm gonna save it and then click run. Click yes. Click install. The installer is downloading. Java is now being installed. Now we are warned that we may need to restart our browsers after installation. So once the install completes, I'll reboot the browser. Okay, so Java has successfully installed. I'll click close. I'll click a verify Java version. And notice we asked, do we want to run this application? I'm going to say, don't show this again. I'm going to click this checkbox and click run. And you can see that we have Java installed. What I'm going to do is close the web browser, open it up again, and then browse to the ASA and allow the Java runtime environment, and I'm gonna install ASDM. Click Save, click Run, click Next, click Next, click Install. I'm gonna allow the program to make changes to my computer, so I'm gonna click Yes, and click Finish. Okay, so I now see a pop-up to connect to the ASA. 
IP address of the ASA is 10.1.1.254. Username is David, password is Cisco. I'm gonna tell the device to remember the username. Click OK. Click Continue to connect to the ASA. The ASDM software is being updated and loaded. Update is completed. And now we can connect to the ASA. Now we're told that there are no active ASA platform licenses installed. The ASA will run in degraded mode. Now that's okay for my lab, but be aware that through the box firewall traffic will be rate limited to 100 kilobits per second and a connection limit of 100 connections will be imposed. I'm gonna click OK. ASDM is discovering information about the device, and there you go. We've connected to the ASA. Version is 9.71. ASDM version is 7.7. .7. Device type is ASAV. Number of CPUs is one. Amount of RAM is the following. Inside interface is configured. So what I'm gonna do now is delete this link and move the cloud to the ASA and connect the ASA to the NAT cloud. So from now on, my PC will connect to the internet via the ASA. I can't breathe, cause you pushed me back. I should have stayed, stayed away from you. It feels like I'm, I'm being attacked. I don't know what, what I'm gonna do. You're trying to improve me, why you do that to me? I don't want hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like it and please subscribe to my youtube channel i want to wish you all the very best